Jones Killer General. That's what this uh, video will be about. I hope you like the video. If you do like the video, please do like the video. And if you haven't subscribed, please do subscribe. And thank you very much for watching. Hi, I'm Mark. And this is my journey through tarot. Come on. moment I don't even know his name so I've got to look him up find out a little bit about him I'll tell you what I found I, out and then we'll uh, do the cards okay this is loaded with hard words that I, I probably aren't going to be able to pronounce so we'll just see how it goes all Russian you know so 1961 Alexander okay I got that one <laughs> Vladimirovich Dvornikov Dvornikov so Alexander Vladimirovich Dvornikov was born on the 22nd of August in Ursik, so he's a Leo, and he's the Russian Ground Forces Army Gen Army General and hero of the Russian Federation. And in 1978, he graduated from military school and joined uh, the Soviet Army. Then, 1982, he graduated further education at the Moscow High Command Training School and uh, served in the Far East uh, Eastern Military District as a platoon and then company commander, uh, later as a battalion chief of staff. Now in 1991, he graduated from a further military academy, becoming a deputy battalion commander in the Western Group of Forces. Then 92 to 94, he commanded the 154th Separate Motor Rifle Battalion of the Six Guards of Motor Rifle Brigade. My God, this name. Then 1995, he became a chief of staff and deputy commander of the 10th Guards Tank Division's 248th Motor Rifle Regiment. 1996, he became regimental commander and was awarded the uh, awarded the Order of Military Merit, plus the Order of Courage. And then 1997, he transferred to command the First Guards Motor Rifle Regiment of the Second Guards Temenskaya Motor Rifle Division in the Moscow Military District. Jeez. Now, 2000 to 2003, he's the Chief of Staff and then Commander of the 19th Motor Rifle Division of, of in the North Caucasus Military District, and he was awarded the Order for Merit to the Fatherland, uh, fourth class with swords. Uh, 2005, he graduated from Further Military Academy of uh, the General Staff Training and became Deputy Commander and Chief of Staff of the 36th Army in the Siberian Military District. 2008, he took command of the 5th Red Banner Army. 2011, he became deputy commander of the Eastern Military District. So now his titles are getting shorter because he's in charge of more. And then uh, as a group. And then 2012 to 2016, he served as the chief of staff and first deputy commander of the Central, Central Military District and was acting commander of the district. He became a lieutenant general. 2014, he was promoted to colonel general. 2015, he became the first commander of the Russian armed forces in Syria during the Russian military intervention in Syria. And then 2016, he was awarded the title of the Russian Federation for Leadership. He's known as the butcher of Syria for targeting civilians while com commanding troops uh, in that region. He became the Southern Military District's acting commander and was confirmed in the position. And in 2019, the European Union enacted sanctions on him due to his role in the Kerch Strait incident. And then 2020, by decree from President Putin, he was promoted to the rank of Army General. 2022, he was placed in charge of military operations during the Russian invasion of Ukraine. Okay, And he's believed to have been behind the Kramatorsk railway station attack that left at least 59 people, mostly women, children, and elderly, uh, dead. His military reputation is cited in the international press for the harsh conduct of his military campaigns, particularly in Chechnya and Syria, where he was described as the butcher of Syria for his scorched earth campaigns, and that's according to retired U.S. general. The uh, appointment of this new general indicates Vladimir Putin's intent to continue this conflict for months, if not years. And he's in the, in the he, yeah, oh my gosh, this guy is the goon called in by Vladimir Putin to flatten cities like Aleppo uh, in Syria. He has used tools of terrorism throughout that period, including work with the Syrian forces, torture centers, systematic rape, and nerve agents. He is the worst of the worst. Okay, so Alexander Dvornikov. 
Putin's new commander, the killer general. What in the world can the cards tell us about uh, this fellow? Well, is he going to is he going to take uh, Ukraine? Is he the one who's going to uh, finish this off for Putin? Alexander Dvorakov. Just a full Celtic cross and see how that comes out. Alexander Dvorakov. The guy is supposedly ruthless and uh, scorched to earth kind of approach. So if we do too much, let's have a little meditate. Alexander Dvorakov. What can the cards tell us about this killer commander? Okay, six cards. One, two, three, four. Oops. Okay, five, which I'll have to die for now. And six. Alexander Dvorakov. See what the cards have to say about this signifier card for Alexander Dvorakov is temperance. Well, that's interesting for a commander. So temperance is finding that right balance. So well, that's encouraging. Um, and Major Arcana. Uh, the um, and this is uh, towards the latter end of the uh, tarot. So and that's where this uh, general hopefully is coming, or this commander is hopefully coming in at the latter end of this war, and it'll be over soon. Uh, the um, challenge to that is this page of swords, very weak offer of uh, justice. Hmm. The base of this reading then, with this Nine of Cups is, yeah, that's who he is. He's uh, the greedy merchant, very proud to display all the uh, trophies he's accumulated. And then the past of this reading, Alexander Vornikov, is uh, this page, like another weak offering of a plan. Interesting. So and that's in the past, weak offering of a plan. So maybe he's built up to be more than he really is. Uh, just all that terror uh, made it look better. And the sky of this reading is the Five of Pentacles being left out in the cold. That's in the sky. So that's the last thing that uh, he wants to happen. Uh, he needs to be in charge. And then the final outcome of this is the Seven of Swords is abuse, um, the theft, betrayal. Yeah. Four more cards for Alexander Dvornikov. Is he going to finish this war in Ukraine? Let's at least know that. Is he going to finish this war in Ukraine? The self of that question is a two of cups. Again, this is temperance, and this is finding about. So it looks like he's looking for a way to uh, to end this. Actually, the um, environment that that's in is the empress. Now that's a strong, feminine, uh, almost mother earthly kind of energy. And so, okay, so this is interesting. That finding this uh, solution is in the uh, environment of the empress. The hopes and the fears for that. Uh, with his Knight of Cups is, uh, okay, a fighting offer of passion, hope perhaps, compassion. And then the uh, final outcome for that uh, is strength. Yeah, so nothing will be done if they don't come out on top. So he's going to have to come out of there with uh, taking a significant part of what there are... Um, uh, what they were after, and uh, and then uh, it will come to an end, but that's how it will come to an end. He will find some way to get that balance in there, and I'm sure it'll be horrific. I don't know if we would have expected more, um, so um, what do you think about this guy, and how do you feel about that reading? Hey, I'm going to show you the cards now. Hang on. So this is the Aquarian Tarot by David Palladini. This is published by US Game Systems. And I really love these cards and they've got an interesting story behind them too. And there's a follow-up deck um, that I sometimes use uh, together with these. But uh, so they come in a, a typical, uh, just a little cardboard card box. It's fine. Um, the artist is David Palladini, who was born in Italy, but raised in the United States in Highland Park, Illinois. So that's a little bit interesting once you get to know the cards. And uh, the instruction book that comes with them is just a run-of-the-mill, uh, this card means this and that card means that kind of thing. Really nothing all very meaningful in here, and it's kind of printed really small. So there's all of that. The interesting thing about these cards is uh, what happened, David Palladini was just finishing up um, art school 
when I forget who it was, someone approached him about doing uh, tarot cards. Um, and now David Palladini just recently died. This is 2021 in May, and he may have died three years ago or in that in that time span. So. Uh, 17 2017 or something and then so then these were done at the beginning of his career which would have been put him in his uh, 20s or late 20s I would imagine so you can see that these are very nice cards very soft spirit and very to the point uh, they're not hard to uh, interpret <clears throat> and I lay these out like this so that you can get an idea of what a full deck looks like if you're not a person who buys a lot of cards or or sees a lot of tarot cards. I do because I just like to collect them. I think they're they're little pieces of art. <clears throat> but uh, this fellow uh, did these right out of art school, and then he could never have imagined they would come such an integral, become such an integral part of tarot. And then later in his life, he went ahead and um, and did an updated uh, deck. But these are the Aquarian Tarot by David Palladini, and uh, they're really great. I love them. Hey, I'm Mark. It's been my journey through tarot. I'm going to do it all again tomorrow if you want to come. So, ciao for now. really make a big difference. Thank you.